hello. It's a Friday talkie. Well, no, it's not, is it? It's the Saturday speaky, or it's been suggested squawky. Saturday squawky. Why oh, some kind of chicken? Anyway, um, yes, first topic today is a response to Jamie Gray's topic. Why make YouTube videos, which is a really interesting video, and I will link back to that. I do recommend going and, and checking that out, because... It raises lots of cool questions. Um, why do I make YouTube videos? Um, how I start... I mean, I have answered this before, but I'm going to answer it again and, and put some perspective on it because I've been doing it a long while and my attitude towards it has probably changed a bit over the years. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, I started out making videos... Well, I, I started on YouTube, actually... Uh, first time I used it was probably about a year before I ever made a channel and I was just watching music videos and that was the only thing I used it for. I remember when YouTube was announced was it 2005? I can't, I can't remember what year it was and I just thought what's the point of that? Why would I want to watch someone's home movies? I don't care about seeing what they did on their holiday or you know, if you don't know the person, why would you want to watch their dog running around in the garden? Or something like that. Um, and I could not see the point. I, you know, I had been watching the odd movie streaming over the internet. You know, films, old stuff that was now out of copyright, black and white, whatever. And I found it amusing on a technical level that you could do that. And then YouTube came along and I, I did not see the point. And then music videos started appearing on it. People were basically putting copyright material all over it. And I started watching. And then I noticed there were other things turning up on it. Vlogs and stuff. And I thought, mm, that's kind of interesting. I mean, the whole um, viral video, people doing silly stunts and, and just stupid things were getting popular and getting on the TV and I thought well I ain't gonna do that kind of nonsense and I still couldn't see a reason for me to use it and put anything on it you know I would watch stuff on it but I thought well I'm never gonna do anything on there and then I in fact at that time I didn't even have a video camera anyway so you know it, it wasn't gonna happen and then I got a uh, a digital camera that could shoot half decent quality video at which point I shot some footage of my dogs running around in the garden and I put that on YouTube for no reason other than I could. And I did a couple more of like uh, cats and stuff like that. And that was, I, I, I had the channel, it was there, but I, I really didn't know what to do with it. I was just putting stuff up because I could. I knew one or two people from IRC chat rooms and, you know, it was like my way of showing them a little bit of how I lived, I guess. And then I did a video of my computer collection. And that's when things took off, because lots of people came along and watched that and commented. Uh, and made suggestions, you know, like, why don't you show us your games? Why don't you do individual reviews of the hardware? Stuff like that. And initially I was resistant to it. I was unaware of any community at that time. Um, any community such as it existed, I didn't know where it was, who was in it, anything. Uh, beyond the people who had commented on my video, I didn't know anyone. I mean, I didn't know them. They, they just appeared out of the blue. So, I was initially resistant, but then I thought, eh, what the heck. I'd been watching a few videos. I'd watched um, Angry Video Game Nerd, and though I found them entertaining, I thought, that's not me, I can't do that. And I saw Classic Game Room, and I thought, well, I like his style. And then I saw Collie UK, who's no longer making videos, which is a damn shame, who had this style of... Uh, generally, he was drunk, <laughs> and he was just playing Spectrum games and stuff really, really badly, and talking a load of drunken nonsense. And he was getting quite a few views, and I thought, OK, if you can do something that badly and get views and not get torn to shreds for being crap, maybe there's hope for me. And so I started doing what it is that I do. 
and I did it very badly. I mean, I, I play badly now, but the videos then were just playing bad. I mean, the image quality was bad, the audio quality was bad. For the first 30, 50, 100 videos, I didn't know what to say or what my style was. I, I tried to keep the talking to a minimum and focus on the game, which now I would not be interested in at all. Um, you know, I wasn't putting myself into the video. It was all about the game, not the person playing it, where now I'm just talking crap and <laughs> having a laugh really um, and that's the thing I I don't I think my initial reason for doing it was because I realized people would watch and yeah on the internet in in the real world I keep a really low profile I don't want to be noticed on the internet I am an attention seeker, <laughs> without a doubt. I have four YouTube channels. I've had multiple websites. I've been known in numerous different circles for music, for webcam chat rooms, for all kinds of things, and been as high profile as I could possibly be on the internet. It's just attention, gimme. Couldn't tell you why. Um, and I forgot what it was I was going to say. But yeah. Yeah, that's kind of why I, I started doing it. I just, I liked the attention. People were saying, please do this. I realised I could, however badly. Um, now I kind of do it. Yeah, I still like, I do like the attention, without a doubt. Um, but I like the whole interaction. I found the community. Or it found me, I don't know. And I like the interaction with those people. I, I try to be as interactive as I possibly can within the limitations of the number of hours in the day. I, I've tried the whole video responses to questions and it's fun but I, I just can't do that at the moment because it actually requires a lot more time looking at the screen reading the comments all in one go and that's hurt, that hurts my eyes so now I comment in bits, uh, I reply to comments in bits and pieces. Um, so yeah, I, I do it for the community interaction, I do it for the fun of it, I think, as much as for the attention and, and getting to, get being seen, talking to people, it, it, there's the two-way thing there. But now that I've found my own style, which is basically talking crap, but talking a lot as opposed to barely talking at all, I really, really enjoy it. It is so much fun and it... I won't say it pains me, but my day is not complete if I haven't made a gameplay video. It's kind of difficult with these, uh, some of these Amiga games, because apart from all the technical aspects of actually just trying to make the discs work, a lot of the ones that I'm going through now are multi-disc, installation required, big manual, and not really just plug in and play. You, you've got to learn how to play them, and that makes it difficult because it... it it kind of takes more than the pff, half an hour or so that it would make me to record would take me to record a video um but i i just love that playing it and the 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 juggling the gameplay with the trying to speak coherently and having something worthwhile to say even if that something is absolute nonsense because sometimes nonsense can be worthwhile oddly um yeah, but that pure fun is for me a big motivator and why I do this. There is a financial aspect. I, I have been open about this for a very long time. Even before there was partnership, there was a financial aspect. I was drawing people to my website. I had advertising on my, on my website. Money. I get money from it. Not a lot, but it's better than none whatsoever. Um... So yeah, that's it's a motivator. It's there. There will be times where maybe I would think ah, I ain't got the time, or I'm not completely in the mood, or I'm tired, or something. And maybe without the that extra motivating factor, I would put it off until tomorrow. But it's it's a good reason to get my ass into gear and get it together. And then when I do get it together, I enjoy it, and I think I'm glad I did that. Ultimately, it's very, very satisfying on a lot of levels. And it's not an easy thing to do, I think, 
if you think about it, and especially if you're a kind of a, a shy person, I think, number of people I know who say they can talk in public really easily, but couldn't dream of sitting in front of a camera, where in public, public speaking, I can't do it. When I was in college for a while, a few years ago, I had to do a presentation and I just ch choked, couldn't, could not speak with these people in the room. Um, I, oh, terrible, absolutely terrified, couldn't do it. But I can sit in front of a camera and go blah, 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 blah. And it is one of those things where people will say to me, I don't know how the hell you do that. But it is one of those things that gets easier. And I encourage anyone and everyone to try it. It's not easy to get noticed on YouTube now. That is absolutely true. Starting out, I mean, I have four channels, and this is the only big one. Well, reasonably big, you know. It's not as big as a lot of them, but I'm very happy with where it's at. I've got three others, which are one is at about 700 and something subscribers, and two are floating around the 200 subscriber mark. And there, I know there are people who will, and it's something Jamie Gray says, there are people who start channels, they don't get the views that they want and they stop. And I do understand that because having smaller channels as well as bigger channels or channel, it, it is when you put in the time and effort and then you, you see the views just trickling and you think, ah. Oh. But if you have fun doing it, it's worth it. And I think if you're not doing it for the fun of it, probably shouldn't be doing it at all. Yeah, fun. At the end of the day, I think that is what it's all about. There are lots of other aspects and lots of other reasons to do it. But for me, it's all about the fun. I think that answers that one. Waffling on there, losing me track. Plot thing. Mm. Okay, another video response. Uh, this is a response to Intellivision Dude, his video, The Condition Tag. How picky are you with your games? And he's referring to the condition of the discs, cartridges, boxes, whatever. I'm going to expand that slightly and include hardware as well. There are collectors who, um, I've spoken this before and you will all know it well anyway. There are collectors who, it's got to be boxed, it's got to be immaculate, it's got to be perfect for it to go into their collection. That can be hardware or software. For me, I don't give a crap about the boxes. I would like Mega Drive games to be in their case. I don't care if it's got the thingy on the top or not. Um, but I will still buy them without the case. If they're going cheap and I want to play the game, I don't care that much. You know, if it's in the case, I'll pay a bit more. If it's not, I don't mind, I'll buy it cheap. Not a problem. The thing that matters the most to me is that it works. And that's it. Certainly as far as cartridges go. Discs, I will not ever buy a disc-based game, be it DVD, CD, floppy disc, and cassette. I'll include cassettes in this as well. I will not buy them if they're not in their case because you need them to be protected. If they're just loose, they're going to be scratched to hell, the disc's going to have drop out, it's just plain, they're going to be knackered. The chances are they may not work, and I won't buy them like that. Having said that, I have been given games without the case, and I will never ever turn my nose up at loose discs, tapes, cartridges, whatever. You know, if they work, I'll play them and I'm happy because ultimately that's what it's all about. Does it work? If it does, it's good enough. Um, yeah, I mean when it comes to buying them discs, I will only buy them in a case because then there's a better chance they'll work. You know, if someone's going to give me one and it works, it's great. Hardware. I, I'm actually equally as unpicky with hardware. It's got to work. I don't care if it's got a box. I, I like it if it's got a box, but I won't pay through the nose for something if it if it's boxed. You know, I, I'm not going to pay loads extra for that box because the box is going to sit up in the loft. You're not going to see it. The, the, the console or computer isn't going to sit in the box. 
it's going to be up in the loft, the console, or whatever, is going to be on the shelf to be viewed and played. What does matter is that it works and it needs to be cosmetically tidy. By that I mean it's n it doesn't have to be spotless and some of these things are like 30 years old, they're not going to be spotless. But it doesn't want to have like massive Greek deep gouges in it or cigarette butts being put out on them or written all over with a magic marker or something or, or um, painted. No, I see these um, custom paint jobs where I, th there was one on eBay recently, a Mega Drive that had been painted red, and I thought interesting, but it's so obvious that someone's just taken a, I don't know if it's a paintbrush or a spray can and masked it out a bit, and, and maybe they've done a reasonable job of it, but I don't care about that because that's not how they came from the factory, and I do being. They need to be kind of original. I don't go in for modding because I like them to be in more or less original condition. There is the odd mod. It's like I've got a um, PC engine and it's been modded. It's got a scart lead on it just to give you a decent picture quality. That kind of thing I'm fine with. It's already been done and it is an enhancement and you know. But generally I just want them to be clean, tidy, not knackered look decent enough and to work. Um, yeah, I, th there was something I saw recently, it was a CD32 console on eBay and it said full working order, small crack on the lid at the back and I'm like I don't want that. It, it was, I haven't got a CD32, it was selling for a reasonable price but it got this crack on it and I was just, I don't want it it didn't look nice <laughs> and that's the thing that it needs to look nice you need to look at it and think yeah that's cool it's like if you, you you got a car and it's been dented in the side or something the first thing you see isn't what a lovely color is or the classic lines you see that dent and it's disappointing I think it, you know I'm like that with consoles if it don't look right I don't want it yeah, I think that answers that one. Um, another topic, because I don't think I've been talking that long. I know um, Mark, Lactobacillus Prime, has been raging about this on Facebook. <laughs> EA, and a few other people have as well, actually. Um, Jurassic Junkie spoke about it last night on his uh, Friday Night Rant. EA have announced that they are going to be making use of microtransactions in all of their future game releases and I find this so utterly objectionable. They sort of started working that way with uh, Battlefield 3, you, you can buy the extra guns, well bollocks to that, I ain't doing that. But the, the game that really comes to mind with me that I have looked at and thought that's a beautiful game but I will never get it is this thing called, is it Real Racing 3 on the Android and there's why I have an interest because I'm kind of doing the Android thing at the moment they've got it so that the game is free cool I paid something like three pound or whatever for Real Racing 2 and I thought bargain I'm, I'm very happy to pay that kind of money for what is a good game and a decent size game so they've done Real Racing 3 and they're giving the game away free now you have got your in-game money, which you win for winning races and stuff like that. And with that you can upgrade your car and stuff like that. And then you, your car takes damage. And you have to do repairs. And now I've I got to get this the right way around. Is it that you have to pay cash for the damage or pay cash for the upgrades? One of those, anyway. You have two ways of doing it. You don't have to pay real cash. But if you don't, you have to wait. Say you've been and duffed up your car or done an upgrade or... I, I don't know if it's the upgrade or the repair job. Can't remember. But one of these, it takes time for them to do it. Say five minutes. So you've done a race, you've duffed your car up a bit or wanting to upgrade it, something like that and you want to go on to the next race but you've got to go into the repair shop or, or and you've got to either wait or you've got to pay microtransaction real money 
and I find that very, very, very objectionable. I don't mind microtransactions that will give you something as a boost, an extra gun. You don't absolutely have it to com continue in the game, but it's a nice little perk. I don't mind that. But to basically cripple the game, unless you pay, to say, yeah, you want to carry on, but we're not going to let you. You've got to sit there for five or ten minutes unless you give us money. No, absolutely not. I'm, I'm appalled and disgusted and horrified. I mean, there was this thing in the news yesterday, was it? A kid using their parents' Apple iPad thingy, playing some game that was full of microtransactions, and the kid didn't realise that these microtransactions, where they were buying extra bits for their game, cost real money, and they ran up a bill of, was it £1,700 or something crazy? I don't know, I only read the headline. But it made the news. Microtransactions in games, I, I think it's a very bad route to be going down. And with the way the current gen consoles, or not current, the next gen of consoles are going, with an awful lot of that, it is the, the, it's the connectedness to the internet. It's since consoles have been hooked up to the internet and updated on the internet and get your software off of the internet, things have gone in a really bad direction. And this whole microtransactions thing is one of those things. Not happy about it. I will not get any more EA games as long as they are using this model. Um, is despicable. It really is. It's not... It is just purely money grabbing. And I mean, fair enough microtransactions to finance a free game. I understand the logic, but for God's sake, don't cripple it. You know, make us pay for perks, fine, but don't cripple it. And then, I mean, things like Battlefield. And this is this is something Jurassic Junkie went into, so I won't go into too much detail. You've bought the game. It's a commercial game. You've paid full price for it. And then you've got downloadable content. Pay more for that. And then you've got microtransactions. Pay more for those. And then some some other stuff. I can't remember. It was season thingamajig tickets. I don't, I don't know that bit, but... So many ways to pay for the same thing that you've already paid for, and it's, it's, it's just greed. I dislike it massively. <sighs> Makes me realise why I like retro so much. I can plug in my Mega Drive cartridge and just play the game badly. Alright, that's all I've got to say about that. Rant over. Got something good to show you now, it's shout out time. Okay then, today's shout out goes to Kimball Justice, who, uh, what's the, the, the URL name is? El, El, oh God almighty, how am I? I don't know how to pronounce this. Elmi, oh. No, I'm just gonna have to put a link to it. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say Kimball Justice and you can <laughs> click the link that I'll put down there because I don't know how to pronounce this name that's in the U URL. Um. What can I tell you about him? I don't know a lot about him, but I've been watching him a little bit recently and thinking, how have I not noticed this guy before? He's doing game reviews, and they are they are reviews as opposed to your gameplay and commentary. These are proper scripted reviews done in an intelligent manner and with a particular style. And that's what it's all about. I like his style. And if he's reminiscent of someone in his manner of speaking, there is a bit of Guru Larry in there. And that is no bad thing at all, because Larry is great. So I don't know if this is an influence as he, as, uh, or, or just a pure coincidence, but there is a similarity in, in style of speaking. And I like it. It's good. And he's got a certain sense of humour in there as well that appeals to me greatly. He's, again, very British, very in English even. Lots of games on here that he's played and uh, reviewed. Sensible Soccer there, Bushido Blade. He's playing some bass here as well. He's got a few videos where he, his earlier ones in particular, playing bass guitar. So, multi-talented chap. Yeah, and I, I don't really know what else I can say, except I like his character, I like his style, I like his way of doing things, I find his videos, and some of them, I mean, 
Leicester the Unlikely, which was his most recent one, is 14 minutes 24. Now, I am a person that while I can sit here and waffle on for absolutely bloody ages, and I don't for a moment expect anyone to watch all of what I, while I'm rambling along, some people just plain do. I have a very short attention span when it comes to watching videos. And it, there are not a lot of people who can hold my attention for more than, say, five minutes. And this chap can. <laughs> that is a talent. If you can hold my attention for like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you're doing something right. And he can hold my attention for that long. So, um, highly recommended. He's on 542 subscribers at the moment. Not doing badly at all. He's been doing the actual gameplay videos for, as far as I can tell, about nine months. Yeah, the channel's been here for, well, the uh, first video was four years ago. Uh, Advanced Lawnmower Simulator. And then he was doing the music stuff and then got back into games about nine months ago. As best as I can tell. Highly recommended. Um, very entertaining. Kimball Justice with a URL that I can't pronounce. Elmi something. That there that you look. What the hell? What a... What does that say? I can't read that. There you go. Okay then. Um, let's zoom back out. Whoa. There. What have we got coming up then? Um, you know the answer to that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to be continuing on the Amiga stuff. I'm. I said I was going to th maybe throw in some other stuff as well last week, and then didn't. It's still going to be slightly erratic output for a few days. I, I, real world stuff. There is stuff going on that maybe I will tell you about depending on how it turns out. Uh, I had my final... Well, I say final. I had another checkup at the hospital for my eyes and it, that was... What day was that? It was this week. I've forgotten what day it was. Anyway... That was interesting, actually. I've seen four other doctors before this guy who all said, yeah, I had retinal tears. And this guy looked at it and said, no, there aren't any retinal tears. It's not a bad thing that they did all the laser surgery, but they were just seeing a ridge of gel on your retina and there were no tears. I don't know if I believe him or not. Someone somewhere is wrong. Either the people who said I had tearing were wrong, and that's four of them, or he's wrong. Doesn't matter in the end. He saw nothing bad going on in there. I've still got a mess of jelly floating around. It is like having a jellyfish floating in my eyeball. It's slightly distracting, but what are you going to do? It's not going to go away, according to him. It's going to be there for life. I don't know if that's true or not. We'll just see what happens. So that's that. Another checkup in three months, and that's all it is, a checkup. It all seems to be stable, and I'm, I'm not about to go blind in that eye, so that's good. Uh, there are other things going on, but I'm not going to tell you about them right now. <laughs> Got something cool coming up tomorrow. I don't know whether that's something that's going to appear on you know, any aspect of it on YouTube or not, so I'm... I'm not going to tell you, but I'm looking forward to it. And then I've got something else coming up on Monday. And I may or may not tell you about that, depending on how that goes. So, um, yeah, there may or may not be more videos. Uh, expect something on Tuesday, gameplay-wise. I don't know if I'll have anything on Monday. I very likely won't have anything on Sunday. We'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, more Amiga videos will be in the pipeline. There will be more Android stuff coming up on playing Android badly. That channel's doing really quite nicely. The subscribers keep on uh, trickling in. Um, that's about all I've got to say, really. Nice weather. I'll shut up now. Thank you for watching.